Hello and welcome to Builds NSA. I'm Manish and in today's video I will be showing you how you can overclock your Ryzen processor. The processor which we will be using in this video is Ryzen 7 1700. Now before we start the video I just want you guys to know one thing. I know when it comes to overclocking most of the people think that they might end up damaging their components. Which is in fact true but it is not as easy as you guys think that you will be damaging your component. It's not like that you just put in some settings, you just press the button, and your computer boots up into just the fire and smoking and it's none of that. If you play under the safe limits, nothing will happen to your system, only random crashes and that's just a sign of unstability. With it said, let's get into the video. First of all, I want you guys to download these three softwares, Cinebench R20 to check the stability and increase in the score as high view overclock, then Hardware Info 64 just to monitor all the necessary details. And third, Prime95 just to check once you're done overclocking, just to check overall stability of the system. Also, if you're using stock cooler to cool your processor, I would recommend don't push beyond 1.35 volts for gaming and don't push 1.3 volts if you're doing some heavy workloads. So in order to overclock your CPU, you need to go into the BIOS. To go into the BIOS, restart your PC or power on your PC and smack the delete key until you go into the BIOS screen. So what you see here is a Gigabyte BIOS and the motherboard which you are using is a Gigabyte B450 RS Elite. You will see a couple of uh, options on the top ribbon and out of those options you need to go into the first option that's MIT. Under MIT you will have a couple of more options out of which we will be using advanced frequency setting, advanced voltage setting and PC health status in order to overclock our CPU. First you need to go into advanced frequency settings then in advanced CPU core settings. As you can see right now my processor is running at 3 GHz, that's the clock ratio and if you come down below you will see a couple of more options. The first core performance boost, you have to disable it. For the reason that this function allows the processor to automatically overclock itself to a certain limit but since we are manually overclocking it we don't want it to auto overclock itself. Now the second option AMD cool and quiet function, you have to disable it as well. Now what it does is, this function allows your CPU fan speed to run quietly so it doesn't ramp up like, uh, it doesn't really ramp uh, at the really 100%, it also doesn't really make any noise since you're not, it's, your processor is not really highly overclocked. But since we are overclocking it right now, we also want the uh, fan to actually run to its max speed if the temperatures are going really high. Now third option, SVM mode. Now this mode, you can keep it enabled or disabled, it doesn't really matter as this uh, function just allows you to um, install second OS without uninstalling the first OS. Maybe for like some old school softwares that can only run at old, old windows and stuff. Fourth option, global C state control. Now there's one thing that uh, you guys uh, have to listen carefully about this function. Now first of all, this function, what it does is, it commands the CPU to lower down the power and lower down the frequency when it is at idle state which sometimes create stability issues. Now I recommend one thing, initially before overclocking just disable it and once you're done with the overclocking you got your desired speed with the necessary voltage, enable it and run the stability test again. If you find there is uh, some like it is stable then better if you have enabled. If you find some stability issues like your system is not stable having this function enabled then just simply disable it and let it be like that. After disabling all this function, come to our stock you will see clock ratio. A clock ratio is actually a multiplier you need set in in order to uh, set the frequency at which you want uh, your processor to be overclocked at. As you can see it's set to auto and right now it's running at 3 gigahertz. So just set the multiplier to 31 and as you can see it's set it to 3.1 gigahertz. Now I just save and exit. Now the reason why I didn't change any voltage because I want to see and you would want to see how far your processor can actually overclock without adding any extra voltage. That means you, uh, you would want to see how far your uh, processor can actually overclock uh, on the stock voltage. So the PC now boot into the windows, let's check the stability. 
But first of all, you need a Cinema 20 and second, Hardware Info 64 to monitor all the details. Now, if you're good at remembering, just remember the score you will get initially in the Cinema 20 and then you can compare it with the final score once you're done with your overclocking. In Hardware Info 64, you need to monitor the temperature of your CPU and your motherboard. That's the VRM. So come down where it says your CPU name and this is this is the CPU temperature and you scroll down a little bit more you will see VRM MOS here so you need to monitor these two temperature and try not to be on this uh, exceed these temperature beyond 80 degrees in any circumstances now if you're all clocking for gaming purpose solely for gaming purpose then you can take these temperature only for stress testing to about 85 to 86 degrees because anyway your process is not going to exceed uh, about 60 to 65 to 70 degrees in any case even if you're overclocking at stock voltage uh, stock cooler sorry if you're overclocking your processor for some heavy workloads then i would say don't uh, try maximum uh, temperature you should have on your cpu for a heavy workload should be between 75 to 80 degrees it shouldn't exceed 80 degrees in any case now let's benchmark and let's check the stability and also we will note down the score what is going to be the score in order to compare for the final overclock So this is the score at 3.1 GHz, so you can just note down for later use. So as you saw, it didn't crash, that means your system is stable at this point. I would recommend doing every test for about 3 times, like every time you run into an do it for about 3 times. And don't run it one after another, just run first time, wait for the CPU to cool down, then run second, then wait for the CPU to cool down, and then third. That will give you better stability on check. Now after this, you, um, just note down the score and let's go into the BIOS and increase the multiplier to 32. So we are in the BIOS now and the, you need to repeat the same thing. You need to go under this MIT tab and under MIT you need to go into advanced frequency settings. You see here CPU clock ratio just set it to 32 and you can see it is uh, set to 3.20 gigahertz now just save and exit So we boot up into the windows again and now just rebench it again, run in a bench, run hardware into 64, monitor details, bench three lines, let the CPU cool down after every time you bench your CPU. Once it completes, we will just hit the BIOS again, set the multiplier 33 and then rebench it. So the CPU didn't crash and we completed the benchmark. So let's go into the BIOS, hit the multiplier 33 and rebench it. So we are in the BIOS, now again go under MIT, Advanced Frequency Settings, Clock Ratio 33, Save and Exit.
So the system actually boot into the Windows without any uh, stability issue. Let's just benchmark three times again. I'm just gonna do it one time for the sake of the video to make it as short as possible and as informative as possible. So run it three times. Let the CPU cool down every time you do it. So as you can see, the CPU is stable. It didn't crash. And if you're running, you, you should be running three times benchmark and if it uh, passes all of those, then your CPU is completely stable. Now all you need to do is just go back into the BIOS, set the multiplier to 34, 35, however you want it, and save and exit, rebench it three times, do this process again on the stock voltage until you crash. So I know about my CPU that my CPU is stable to 3.7 on stock voltage it is completely stable without any stability issue. Now I will set my multiplier to 38, 3.8 gigahertz where it actually crashes at stock voltage. But I'm not going to change the voltage because I want to show you what it actually looks like if your system crash. There are, I know there are many people who must have never tried overclocking maybe because of the uh, fear of damaging their components or maybe having no knowledge. So I will do it. I won't change the voltage, I will set the multiplier to 38, 3.8 GHz and then benchmark and you can see what crash looks like. So we actually did boot into the windows but I don't think it will be stable and stock voltage. It will crash anyway, I've tested many times. Now what happens sometimes is that your computer might post into Windows. It will definitely boot up into the Windows, but in other cases, your computer might not even boot. It will go into the boot loop. Now what happens when the computer boot, uh, goes into boot loop is that your computer will try to boot three times. And every time if it fails, like if it's trying to um, boot three times, and if it fails every single time, so the motherboard will reset the BIOS to the default settings. So don't be scared if you're trying first time like what's happening, your, your computer is not booting up and it's, it's in a boot loop. And also, once it completes a three fail, like when it's going to boot the fourth time, now what will happen is, uh, your computer might take about a couple of minutes to reset the, uh, reset the settings. It might take somewhat like a couple of seconds to about one or two minutes. So don't be scared like your computer is not booting up what's happening. Just let it do its work. It will set the BIOS back to default and your computer will be fine. And there it is. This is what it looks like when the computer crash. I'm not able to move my mouse. My screen is completely frozen. I didn't damage any of my component. My PC is completely fine. It's working. Nothing really happened. Just a crash. So now all you need to do is, since we need to change the voltage in order to make uh, our system stable, the first thing you need to do is go on Google. Search about a processor. And what I mean by that is, Go on Google, search about like suppose it's a we are overclocking Ryzen 7 1700 here. So I'm just gonna uh, I'm just going to search like Ryzen 7 1700 OC settings. Now it will give you a brief idea about what other people are overclocking, like at what voltage, at what settings, whatever it is, what settings are they using, or what voltage they are using to uh, overclock this processor at the uh, frequency that you want it to be. You can maybe just type it down like 3.8 gigahertz overclock 1700 and it will show you a post randomly. There are some like posts you can go to some websites such as like Tom's Hardware and then other websites just go there. People are discussing you. You can see many articles people have posted. You can even take a reference from 1700X if you can because there's not much of a difference between both the CPUs. It's just a matter of the frequency. Um, so yeah. Just go there and have a uh, rough idea. Now, if you're overclocking, if you're still using the same processor, then I must tell you uh, the average uh, voltage for 
overclocking 1700, 1700 at 3.8 GHz is 1.275 voltage to 1.3 volts. Once you're done searching about your processor, you got to know or just say you have an idea about the voltage you need to make your system stable. Hit the BIOS again. If you're using a Gigabyte board, uh, you cannot just set the uh, voltage straight to like 1.3 or whatever it is. Um, first of all, under MID tab, go to PC Health Status. And in here, you can see CPU V Core. Now, CPU V Core is your current and stock voltage. Since we didn't change the voltage, this is your stock voltage. Now, what you need to do is you need to add the voltage to this voltage. Basically, if you want to increase the voltage, you need to uh, add the voltage to this stock voltage. So here now you need to do a small math. All you need to do is you you, you just need to take this uh, stock voltage 1.188, then add a voltage. It start from like about 0.100. And if you want 1.3, well adding 1.188 plus 0.114 gives you 1.3 and this it actually it gives you 1.302 but it is not, not that much of a difference it's 1.3 this is the voltage you need so now let's go, go back to the BIOS and let's see how you put in the uh, voltage go to advanced voltage setting and then you need to go you, you can see here it's a dynamic V core dynamic V core SOC and DRAM voltage. Now, the SOC voltage and DRAM voltage is basically for your RAM overclock. But we don't have to do anything with this. You will just see our first option, and that is dynamic vCore. That's your CPU uh, voltage that you need to change. Now, here you can see it is auto. Now, all you need to do is just type 0.114, and that's all you need to do. Hit enter. So it will change it to like one. Uh, it will add this voltage to the stock voltage making it 1.3 volts once you hit that just save and exit so we did boot into windows now and um, rebench your cpu apply the same process once again rebench it three times let your cpu cool down after every single round you do it if it completes three rounds that means it is stable now what if you want to overclock it even further suppose you want to overclock it further to 3.9 gigahertz now first of all you can search on Google about the voltage at 3.9 GHz like you did for the 3.8. Or second thing you can do is the best thing which I say in order to get the exact voltage you need for your system like not too low to make it crash, not too high to give you high temperatures. So go back into the BIOS, set the multiply to 39, save and exit, redo the same process again. 3 times punch, let your CPU cool down after every single round. If it completes, that means your system is stable at that voltage. If your system is not stable, if it crashes, reset your PC, put in 3.9, increase a voltage by a bit. Now suppose it's 1.3, set it to 1.325. So guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, just dislike it. Subscribe for more content like this and press the bell icon to get the notification as soon as I upload the video and see you later